Hello, Rob here, and welcome to R&B Reviews. Today I'm going to review a movie that I saw a little bit ago, uh, but I felt like I needed time to digest it before reviewing it. The movie itself is called The Stuntman. It was released in 1980, and it's a very weird, unusual, yet entertaining film. It's based on a novel by Paul Bredot. The story follows a Vietnam veteran named Cameron who's on the run from the police when he ends up on a movie set for a movie that takes place during World War I. Uh, the movie is being filmed by a power-crazy director named Eli Cross, played by the great Peter O'Toole. When a stuntman accidentally dies, Cross has Cameron replace him so that he can hide from the police. From there, he falls in love with the dedicated leading actress, played by Barbara Hershey, and Cameron, who is a paranoid, starts to wonder if Eli is trying to kill him so he can capture the best stunt work on film for the movie. Now, I first heard about this movie in a book that one of my college professors wrote about comedies called The World of Comedy by uh, Wes Gehring. That's him there. Um, I highly recommend this book because it talks about the different subgenres of comedy from personality comedies to romantic, screwball comedies, satires, and dark comedies and stuff. And he mentioned this movie in the uh, dark comedy uh, chapter, so I recommend checking this book out. Uh, if you're interested in the history of movie or anything in general about movies. Um, and recently, uh, this is very weird, recently this movie started showing up in my searches because I guess the director Richard Rush, who also adapted this film, passed away this past April. So I kind of took it as a sign to go find this movie and check it out. So I went on my library's uh, website and lo and behold, they had it. So I went over there and rented it and watched it. Anyway, um, I feel like this movie has kind of fallen by the wayside a bit. I found a quote from Richard Rush saying that when he was lecturing uh, to a bunch of potential film students, he asked them if they had seen any of his films. He started off with the movie Color of Night, which he made in 1994, and out of 200 students, 80 hands went up. And then when he talked, wanted to ask him if he had seen The Stuntman, which is a film that he wanted to talk about the most, only two hands went up, and he's like, wow, this film is totally lost on this generation. Um, I also read that this movie did have a hard time getting released because The Stuntman is a multi-genre film which wasn't really common back then as it is now because The Stuntman is a comedy, it's a drama, it's a social satire, it's an anti-war film, it's an action-adventure thriller, it's an art house film loaded with symbolism, all rolled into one. Um, I thought the beginning of the movie started out great. It, it Basically, it's we see random things that kind of sets the mood for what the audience will expect in terms of comedy and the dark humor and so on. Uh, something that I really liked about this movie right off the bat was the dramatic scenes. Like, for example, when Cameron is being chased, you know, we have, like, very dramatic music. And then when we get to some of the film's darkly comedic scenes, we get uh, light upbeat music, which is kind of like an element of the dark comedy subgenre. What grabbed my attention the most was the smart satirical dialogue. Like, there's a scene where a screenwriter complains to Eli about how movie studio executives cut the dialogue, which I think is kind of relevant. Everybody wants to take things away from me. You want to take my scene away, you want to take my food. You got another scene. I'll write you another scene. Thank you. It won't make a goddamn bit of difference. Studio will cut them all out anyway, like they do everything else. All you're going to have left is a bunch of swell battle scenes. Well, they won't cut my scenes out. No? What makes you so special? Because they know that if they touch my film, I'll kill them. I also enjoyed the camera work and shot composition. For example, in one scene there is a crowd of people off to the side, including adults and kids of various ages that are watching a very violent take place on the beach. And I love their reactions from being grossed out to being intrigued. And plus, we also have some very good shots of when Peter O'Toole is coming on for the first time, it's the camera's panning up to him. Steve Railsbeck plays Cameron, and I've read reviews from people that they didn't like him be in the role, but I liked how he kind of had a blank facial expression, like there's something unsettling inside of him and we don't know what he will do next. Peter O'Toole is terrific as Eli Cross. He's very dramatic, controlling, and manipulative. Palm trees, yet more palm trees. Who had the audacity to put palm trees there? They will be in every shot. And what are palm trees doing waving around on a battlefield in Europe during the First World War? Answer them in that. He's portrayed almost like a godlike figure on the set because he will do anything for a shot, such as not telling Cameron or his lead actress any last-minute changes before starting filming, so he gets a natural reaction. He's also very controlling, and he believed he can not only manipulate his actors and his crew, but the audience as well. The jig. <laughs> Terrific. We'll do it. Uh, what? The jig. 
Eli. All right, a jig's too far. A Charleston. A Charleston. Yeah, it's a Charleston. A Charleston on the wing of the aeroplane. Yeah, Charleston's ridiculous. Exactly. And Charleston is silly, Eli. Nobody will believe it. I shall do it and they will believe it. You'll get a laugh, Eli. Only when I want them to laugh. Right, Lucky. We also see Eli talk down to the cast and crew, uh, which is, again, very relevant now because some filmmakers like Joss Whedon have been accused of having very things done on set that were very manipulative things. So that, again, is pretty uh, relevant, too. Supposedly, O'Toole based his performance on his Lawrence of Arabia director, David Lean, who was a very dramatic director in real life, and he didn't care about anything but the shots that he wanted, no matter what happened. Um, I also liked how the action scenes were edited, like there, there's shots where you think you're watching the movie like how you would see in the final cut of the film, and, and then sometimes you get some things off to the side, like, you know, people standing on the side or a stuntman coming in giving Cameron directions. It kind of symbolizes how Cameron is starting to have a hard time telling the differences from reality and fantasy. The movie is multi-layered with themes on reality, fantasy, war, how to make a movie, and I feel like I'm only scratching the surface with what can be found with this movie. I have a feeling every time somebody watches this movie, they will uncover something that they may have missed uh, from seeing uh, from the previous viewing. If there is an issue with this movie that I had is I feel like sometimes the movie does ramble on a little bit, and there's times that we cover ground that we've already covered a few times in scenes before. Uh, but I have read comments from people on message boards and in reviews that Hollywood makes the same type of films over and over again. And you know, if you're looking for something different, challenging and unconventional and dark, and if you can you know, handle a movie that was released about 40 years ago, I recommend giving this movie a try. It's, it's not going to be for everybody, but I mean, if you're looking for something different, give the stuntman a try. All right, well, that's my review of The Stuntman. Um, you know, if you've seen this movie, you know, tell me what you thought about it. Uh, do, are, what do you think of Peter O'Toole? Are you a big, have you seen him in other movies? What do you think of him? And, um, you know, feel free to leave any comments, any feedback, and, uh, you know, feel free to check out some other reviews of movies that you can watch at home or still playing in your local theater. Thank you very much for watching.